Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the Lodge Cast Experience. Warning, warning, dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. And welcome to Hot Takes. Ha! Ha! <laughs> it's a rainy night in Los Angeles. And uh, what better weather to just hunker in with a Netflix original movie, Bird Box. Bird Box. Bird uh, Box. The three of us, uh, myself, the Lodge Master, with me as always is Brother Bishke. Cheep! And uh, Brother Lucas in the back. Ka-ka! I think the three of us are the last people on the planet to have seen this movie. Yeah, we're at least two weeks late. Maybe three this, weeks late. This is late. a Christmas release? This, I, I think it came out in time. On Christmas Day. Yeah. On Christmas Day. Yeah. Christmas Day. <laughs> damn. God damn. What a stocking stuffer it was. So, yeah, we finally just thought, you know what? Everybody's probably seen this. They probably have their thoughts. And we got to just throw our hats in the ring and see what all the fuss is about. The Lodge Mistress had listened to the audiobook of this, and she said that because a lot of it is blindfold-based and sound-based rather than sight, it was a very interesting audiobook listen, and she highly recommended it. And then when she saw the actual movie, she was like, nah, it didn't, it didn't really live up to my expectations. But what movies do? I fell off the couch when I saw the end credit say that this was based on a book. <laughs> like, like rubbed my eyes, like I, I, I rewound it, and I you were You it. were agog. I was agog. Agape. I mean, I guess like, you know, like, because it's kind of the reverse of A Quiet Place. Sure. Um, you know, A Quiet Place works because it's sound, and it's, so it's kind of silent, and it's just pure visuals, and that can work in a movie. But because this is, like, supposed to be, like, blindfolded, like, you can't really portray that, like... Well, it's funny that people... I would heard people mention the reverse Quiet Place, too, but really it's just the happening with blindfolds. It's the like, happening like if, mixed if, with if, the mist. If, if, like, Mark Wahlberg had his eyes closed. Mixed with The Walking Dead. It It's a poo-poo platter of uh, post-apocalyptic or post-calamitous supernatural event band-together horror thriller action. Yeah. Potpourri. It's now raining again on the Red Dragon, so let it soothe you rather than be annoyed by <laughs> the raindrops. <sighs> um, I, definitely, the ha- I got happening vibes. Now, Lucas, let's discuss this. Brother Bishke has not seen the happening oh, yet, no. which will be yeah. rectified. I, I found out that the happening and the mist were on your must-have-missed list. Yeah, well, M. Night, I, I've missed on purpose for a long time, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but we're, we're going to rectify that real soon. So, Lucas, let's not spoil anything. No, but I'll say, you know, people give M. Night a lot of shit, but to me... He already did He did this. Like, he yeah, fucking like did he, this. he already ran through these bases, so I was thinking, <laughs> man, he's like at a, on his farm in Pennsylvania at some dinner party... Just bragging to people how, like, yeah, he, he thought he thought of that, like, you know, on the over, original bird over box ten years ago. Yeah, the happening looms large over this. The mist looms large, and especially now, credit where due. When the big happening esque freakout was going on at the beginning, where everybody's just losing their minds and killing themselves, and it's going absolutely haywire, I loved it. Like that, I thought that was great. It was handled great. It was it was vicious. It was shocking. Yeah, I needed more of that. Like, but then you you hit that wall where it instantly becomes something that looks like an inspirational soap opera esque stage play, and you realize no movie can keep up that level of awesomeness. Like that's a, that is an expensive, like blank check Netflix budget mm-hmm. extravaganza. But even they like. They can't keep it up. Like it's got to be. It's got to become a uh, Kirk Cameron or Tyler Perry uh, chamber piece yeah, <laughs> real yeah. quick to save money. Keep it in the house. Keep it. Keep it in the house. Uh, have a bunch of colorful quote unquote characters with snappy dialogue. Yeah, it was a real uh, mix of characters. It was like Modern Family or something. It was just like, um, you know, you got every different type of demographic getting hit with the characters but uh, and you got Malkovich you got Malkovich which 
<laughs> I had not seen in a long time, and uh, I, I thought I thought he, I thought this was going to be like another hammy Rounders esque performance, but I thought he ended up being one of the most interesting aspects of the movie, just because he's he's so off kilter, and we we had talked amongst ourselves a bit that. The movie would have been infinitely more interesting if Sandy Bullock and John Malkovich had switched roles. So he was <laughs> he was looking after the kids, trying to, trying to make it work, you know. And yeah. she was the surly kind of uh, gun nut, you know. But alas, and we get Jackie Weaver, who's great, but is always underutilized or strangely utilized as as she was with Widows. A.K.A. Windows. And we get the guy who uh, was in Get Out. But, yep, the TSA agent. But he was not... I don't know. There was not a lot of comedy in this, really, and for him to... There wasn't a lot to do. Like, like he got that one little riff area, but it was like... Everything's so gloomy and serious that, like, yeah. like what, <laughs> comic relief seems kind of perverse in this movie. Yeah. Well, Sandra Bullock kind of presides over the gloominess. She's, uh... She comes off as just, like, mule mean. Yeah. Like, to the kids that she doesn't even name, like, boy and girl. Like, I know that she there's issues with, it, you know, trying to keep it professional and not get too attached and focus on survival. But damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's Sandy B. She's, she's you, like, shut up, kids. You got to think about the people. Like, another thing, and this is what I always love to think about, is the families that gathered around their Netflix, the glowing Netflix queue, around, around Christmas Eve, or around Christmas when it was released. So Christmas gnarly. morn. So gnarly. On mm-hmm. Christmas morn. Yeah. And, they're like, waiting the, for and the opening scene is like Sandra Bullock telling her child, like, I will hurt you. I will <laughs> hurt you. Like, they tune in, like, like a family, I'm talking about a family with kids that would still be embarrassed to, say, see a pretty explicit sex scene in a, a laundry, laundry room. room. Mm-hmm. Very gritty, very <laughs> like, real. Like, I love thinking about those families that sit down to tune in, like, oh, Ooh. blindside, Ooh. speed, we we trust Sandy B, yeah. you know, and That's then... That's something you're not going to get from a studio film. Like, Netflix no. can throw in... They throw in whatever no, the fuck they want. I mean, if that was a theatrical studio, they would have, like, the studio would have been like, look, you got to cut away, like, you can't just have her, like, yeah, walk in on them, just... <laughs> coitus like like connected <laughs> but but i love just thinking about that just like with bright the other netflix big uh, big release you know everybody's like oh will yeah. S- will smith we know him he's a big star and then you get this weird like unpleasant <laughs> and mute, mute had a lot of uh <laughs> mute, mute, the mute sex even, robots and, and mute's uh, even crazier yeah. i love it i love it because there's no real set rating like nobody looks at like m rated ma it's like everything's rated ma yeah for thematic elements or mm-hmm. whatever but the but the joke for me watching this was that like instead of getting one bad movie you get two yeah lucas kept saying that because it, it like it it, it cross-cuts explain explain five, that. five years so it starts like in the shit like in medias race like the cold open is the post-apocalyptic landscape and it it, it seems like okay we're going on this this journey and they're throwing us right mm-hmm. into it and yep. that's that's a great way to start you got my attention <laughs> like this is this is like gonna be you know very visceral and, and then and, what and then it's five years earlier uh, and she's an artist she's like painting and you're like wow this is like way early you know like you're really like starting from scratch and with this movie like the fractured narrative once it once it plays itself out and we catch back up with it it's like it's one of those shrug ones where it's like why did you even do that yeah it just like, seemed to keep us it, it doesn't allow it to build any the tension movie would have, or, or the, suspense. Like, it just, like, it just Yeah, there's no payoff. The most work. terrifying scenes would have been more terrifying because you didn't, you didn't expect them. Or you're just like, yeah, oh, I mean, oh, she's an artist and she's got a sister and she's pregnant, la-di-da. And then, whoa, you know, a post-apocalypse. Yeah. But, no, everything, everything is predetermined by that initial... Yeah, you know, her Open. and the kids survive. So. Without the dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like, it's worthless. I th- I really think that it's based on whatever algorithms where it's like, people want to know what happens towards the end at minute such and such. So it's the best practice to start with a glimpse of that. It's like, no, we're watching it. Mm-hmm. You have us. We're sitting at home. Like, you <sighs> 
I don't know. It's it's annoying. But this movie <laughs> jumps in with both feet. Why do we think it went viral like this? Was this a calculated move on I think Netflix? it was. I like think it was, was. Like the memes started getting yeah, out. Yeah, I think Nef- Netflix definitely hires PR firms to create memes. And they and, pump. And, they and, pump and, the world they, full of they memes. Generate uh-huh. a lot of shit. Because I I heard about the memes for this movie before I even like saw the movie. And that's by design. They're like every everybody's talking about it already. Why don't I know what this is? What is this? And then before you know it, you're watching it. And Netflix is shoving it in your face every time you turn it on. So you can't escape it. Yeah. So (laughs) speaking of not being able to escape looking at something, what are our thoughts on what it all means? Like this is, this can't, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are just going to take it at face value. Like there are monsters that they can't look at. That's what it's about. But what's it really about? Like, is it just a vague parable, or is it? Is, do you think it's more? Do you think it's more directed? Let's say that's a good um, question. I mean, you can project, I think, any number of things because it's such a vapid, blank, <laughs> like yeah, wide open, you know, canvas that's left to interpretation. But watching it with with what's presented, it it. To me, it feels like there is no rhyme or reason to any of it. Bishki, what do you think? I thought maybe like the, you know, the fa- the fact that they can't see light beyond a certain f-stop, you know, or they go insane or kill themselves. It's kind, of, but they stay inside, so it's kind of like maybe like people who are climate deniers or people who stay inside and watch like Fox or people who are <laughs> people who are you know sort of blocked off from a certain viewpoint but if you saw the truth of it it'd be too much to handle so you'd have to kill yourself so then you have to just go blind into the future with love for your children okay and a canopy of blind people at the end and i don't know I, i'm just, i was just trying to it, it, throw anything at it i could but. i and i think i think that might be it i think it they leave it so purposely vague like like when Smash Mouth records a song like All Star, they're like, this can be used for any sport. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the all star of movies. Yeah. You know, because you can throw anything at it. Like, is it about addiction? Is it uh, about religion? You know, you, you, anything that you're grappling with yourself can make sense on this if you squint hard enough. Because I don't feel like it's smart enough to take a position. You know? Yeah, I yeah. think it, it kind of hints at it, like, towards the end, where Sandra Bullock or someone is, like, telling the kids, like, you're never going to be able to protect them. Like, they're always going to have to, like, go out in the world without you. And, like, you know, so maybe something to do with parenting and, and being able to let go and not, <laughs> I don't know. And to be clear, Lucas was turned, his body was turned as far away as it could be from this movie at 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 it, any at, it, at any chance he could get, it becomes it becomes tedious after a while <laughs> when when the same emotional beat gets played. It's like listening to a pianist like hit the same key, mm-hmm. and while that key makes a sound that affects like you know emotion or or tone or mood or whatever, it's like keep okay, going. Like I I got it. Like I got it. <laughs> like you're playing it again. Like yeah, you just, must have it, hated the score and, and to uh, like, Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah, and it just wears you down like it really just like it's become suffocating like for me at least like i just like give me like anything else particularly like anything with john malkovich and i'm fine <laughs> but um yeah sandra bullock to, to, definitely... cu- to keep cutting back to like 12 hours 20 hours 40 hours on the river with her just yelling at the kids like, okay i got it like i <laughs> yeah. got it like i totally it was get it. pretty one note she she and loosened what, up for a else, second what else you got yeah she like, loosened else? up for a second when they were eating pop tarts but <laughs> otherwise no like like what <laughs> like why would you want to play this character this way like it's crazy. I think maybe like aesthetically too, I would have I would have made some drastic choices where like let's say you do you do cut back between the past mm. and the present. 
then the present should only be blindfolded. Like you're literally shooting through the the blue scrim and like you're not right. seeing anything. And guess what, folks? Like you got to live with that and deal with it. And but talk. you know, like you go too wide with a concept like that and people think their TVs are broken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if you're cutting back to the past, then you're giving them that fresh air breath air where know. it's like, okay, like we'll, we'll take it off and let you, you know, relax for a minute. This should have been VR right. or something. Like, yeah. you know, this this could have actually had a good application for VR. And you can imagine, like, Malkovich getting all up in your face, getting too close <laughs> for comfort. Dude. You can smell the, the liquor on his breath, you know? <laughs> like him stealing your dessert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, okay. I mean... I mean the, this... other thing, the other thing that kind of bothered me, too, was, like, a lot of people gave M. Night shit... <laughs> For like him coming up with an explanation, right? Sure, but he, sure. But he does. He does come up with one, and he gives it to you. Yes. And in this, I was thinking, well, well, he's they got big shoes to fill, right? Because like you know, people have already got their knives out, so I wonder what they're gonna do. And I'm like dumb enough to think like maybe up until the last act, like two thirds of the movie, like they're gonna deliver on this. And then you're like, oh, wait, they're not, because it's, you like, You really lost. thought like, they were going to deliver something? I mean, something? like, I thought for sure they would have to have something, but it's like, no. oh, wait a second. No, it's, like, it's like lost. They can't, they can't like, you know, explain it away, because it, there's this, it's been built up too it much. would lose the magic. So, yeah, they're just going to, like, you got to read the book, or, like, just, like, <laughs> not, you're just going to have to, like, like... Look within <laughs> yourself to see what it means. Uh, Which, you know, it's fine if you want to do that, but... But again, it's like, I, I don't think it's fair because clearly whatever it is, it is specific and nuanced enough that there's different layers and levels to it or rules, but like... There aren't... Yeah, we, like we couldn't figure established. out the rules. So it's just like, wait a second. If anyone was going to explain the rules to us, it should have been Malkovich. Like, Malkovich yes. should have been... Or like B.D. B. Wong. Yeah, or B.D. B. Wong. B.D. motherfucking Wong. Oh, B.D. Hey, what's up with the birds? Like, what do the birds have to do? Like, anyone? Because any? birds, like... The birds get, like, f- they flip out when the danger's near or something. I, I took him to be, like... Like the canary in the coal mine yeah. or something? But I don't know the greater significance. Are the birds your guide? But what's don't up birds bird have better box? eyesight than most animals or something? I think uh, I think we we might have missed <laughs> we might have missed the point of the bird box itself. Yeah, but that's okay um, because the bird box remains and the bir- the digi birds join their brethren at the end. So, anything else to add about this experience? This two hour plus experience? Not too much. All right then, we're gonna go to the bones, <laughs> y'all. We're gonna go to the bone yard. Uh, brother Bishki, I'm I'm curious, what's going on? Ah, uh, I remember talking to Justin about this, and he was probably right. It's probably in the one and a half bone range. You talking about brother Justin? Brother Justin. Okay. And uh, and yeah, I mean, you have to. He had an interesting theory about it being. He's like he's like if you look at it as uh, the danger is social media and screens or something like that, then it almost becomes interesting. And then he wrote, like, almost. Yeah, yeah. You really have to force some meaning on it. Because once I started to try to develop a meaning on it, then I started to at least entertain myself. But Sandra Bullock, is the, the charm's kind of gone for me with her. Um, <laughs> like, I don't know, it was around Crash. Mm. 2005 where crash I was just really like, affected you where i was just like man she's, sandra bullock she's, was in crash sandra yeah. bullock was crash yeah yeah and she's she crash and she's kind of <laughs> of what i've seen her like she's she's um kind of played that you know she doesn't have the charm she used to for me so mm. um yeah one and a half i'm sorry i i uh i'm I had to see it. <laughs> yeah, you did. We all did. We all got to see it sometime. Brother Lucas in the back. Yeah, I definitely struggled to stay awake and engaged and, and focus <laughs> in this movie. You didn't do any of that. And even in the opening, like, first half, like, apocalypse stuff, like, again, you know, M. Night beat you to it. Susan Beer, I'm sorry. I can't give you any credit, you know, where credit's due. I got I to gotta give M. Night the tip of the hat here. Mm. And uh, Malkovich was the bright spot. I wish there was a lot more of him. Like you said, I thought it'd been interesting if the roles had been reversed. You know, had been inspired casting. Like my favorite, like the salad dragon moment for me was when they all blindly drove to the grocery store, 
and the invisible wind forces was like flying around them and everyone started panicking and it just cut like whip pans to Malkovich going, we're not going to make, <laughs> we're not going to make it. And it's like, I don't know, for some reason that'd be like the last thing I'd want to hear him say, like if I was in that. Yeah. scenario so i just i just thought that was great so i have to, i give it one bone one for, bone. for malkovich one uh, solid bone yeah <laughs> for, for for being surly all right that's fair enough i it's a tough one because i my my pleasure centers spiked so hard a couple times with that aforementioned uh, apocalyptic chaos suite toward the beginning i thought that was masterful I could watch a loop of the rapid sequence. Uh, I thought that looked great. I don't mm -hmm. know what kind of digital water hybrid trickery they pulled, but looked amazing, felt amazing, sounded amazing. Um, I thought the scene where the weirdo that they let in starts creeping around the newborn babies and screws up the whole day for everybody, <laughs> <laughs> to put it mildly, was super disturbing and super intense, and I really enjoyed that part. So, I think those those three little blocks, and the fact that Sandra Bullock was giving me serious, like, early 2000s Michael Jackson vibes. <laughs> like, I don't know if it was, like, kind of the haircut... <laughs> Um, the nose. The nose. The nose. The, well, the, it was the nose and the hair and the, the nose makeup. Is definitely, she, she, had, she had a lot of white. Like she was more pale, I think. She, well, something. and she there's definitely some digital makeup being applied to her as well, which gave her this kind of ethereal glow in the facial Cyborg. region. And that gave me serious MJ vibes too. Like when when he's uh, really in control of his music video shoots in that era. So. Those four little quadrants should make up to two bones, but I can't give it two bones. Like, this, this, no, I, I can't do it. So I'm going to knock it down a half to one and a half. That's my scientific method. That's what I'm landing on, and we're all in the same region, so I, I wish I wish one of us had really cottoned to this and really, uh, really loved it. I don't, I haven't found... happening. I can't, I just nobody, can't get over that. I don't think anybody really loves it. I don't think anyone, yeah, everyone's like, I got tricked into watching Bird Yes, Box. Yeah. yes, everybody I've talked to is like, Ugh. I'm like, have you seen it? They're like, yeah. So, <laughs> that's kind of where we're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... You know, what happens when that many people watch something? It doesn't mean it's good, it just, but it's success. Yeah, I guess there was like so. a, Netflix put out at least a hundred movies last year, like, that you've never, I was going down lists of them kind of over the break, and I was just like, oh my god, so I haven't much. heard of any of this. Yeah. But all you need is one to catch on, and everyone's like, I gotta get Netflix, gotta watch Bird Box. My watch history is just like Twilight Zone episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you stay in the Twilight Zone, and we'll see what comes next. Bright, mute, bird box. Bright box. <laughs> Bright box. <laughs> Bright Bart, question mark. Uh, What's it going to be? Uh, that's Bird Box, y'all. I hope uh, I hope all you folks that got tricked into watching it have, have uh, commiserated with us and uh, have eased your, your blindfold PTSD a little bit. And uh, yeah, we'll 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 keep coming back with more uh, more video on demand selections as as needed, and a little little super preview here. We're thinking of starting some great debate series. That means if there's a movie that has come out that is past its prime, you know, like it's been out for a while, people have time to have had time to ponder it, but there is strong dissension in our own ranks. We will re-watch it and hash it out for you in episode form. So we'll get some Royal Rumbles going. Well, that's Bird Box, y'all. That's Bird Box in the Prius, y'all. Cheep, cheep, cheep. Cheep, 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 cheep. Love and light, y'all. Love and light.